All right, good evening. It's Dr. Dan Ritchie, president of the Functional Aging Institute, and tonight I've got a great webinar on the top five tactics that are working uh, to market to the mature client. Uh, I did this presentation uh, probably actually in an abbreviated format at the Functional Aging Summit a couple weeks ago. Um, so if you were there live and you weren't napping, um, then uh, some of this will be a uh, refresher for you. Uh, but I know many of you weren't able to attend the summit, so we wanted to repeat this and uh, and make a recording and make it available to uh, hundreds of folks that weren't able to attend. So, so glad you're here. Glad you're with us. Uh, we're going to get rolling. So the marketing challenge, your mission, should you choose to accept it. So we really are going to talk about finding them, engaging with them, getting them to know, like, and trust you, selling them your services, and of course, serving and satisfying them really is up to you. That's your job. We're not going to spend much time talking about that, but that is key, right? If we sell them a, a fitness service, a fitness product, an online training program, an in-person training program, if you don't serve and satisfy them, they aren't going to stay loyal clients. They're not going to refer, um, and so obviously you have to deliver great service. We're kind of uh, assuming that's going to happen. So, so let's talk about how we find them, how we engage with them, and how we get them to know, like, and trust you. <clears throat> so the top five tactics I'm going to talk about tonight, uh, email marketing, Facebook marketing, video using YouTube, Facebook, or television, BNI, Business Network International, networking, um, if you don't have BNI in your market, their odds are there's some sort of business networking, uh, social capital. Your social network is really, really valuable. It's it's really helpful if you know half the business owners in your community. Um, it just builds your credibility, your authority, and your influence. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about a book. Uh, we have a book that we give out. Uh, we literally use it like a business card. In fact, I'm sold out right now, so i got to order more books. So uh, we'll talk about that as well. Um, and we'll talk about each one of these one by one as we go. So email marketing, let's just hit kind of the highlights. Um, I've already done a webinar in detail on email marketing. And if you haven't seen that, um, you definitely want to check that out. Uh, I literally go step by step in terms of how often you should be emailing. Uh, the, the reality is you're going to be better off emailing your list five times a week than once a week. Uh, you're going to be better off emailing your list five times a week than once a month. I know some people are nervous. Well, if I email my list more than once a month, they're going to opt out. Well, then they didn't want to be on your list, and you don't want them on your list. So uh, frequency is actually going to help you. Um, this week I've emailed my list, I believe, every day. I've emailed different pieces of my list, different segments of my list, uh, and I've been emailing them uh, literally every single day. Um, different offers, different questions, different videos, content, newsletters, a variety of things. Okay, so um, it really comes down to the list is king and the money's in the list. So if you have an email list that's a thousand people or more, you've got a lot of money and a lot of opportunity in that list. Um, so you always, always, always need to be building your list. Uh, in fact, we're at the point now where we're consistently adding. 20 to 50 people a month to our list, and guess what? People are consistently getting off our list, right? They move away, they change email addresses, they change jobs, uh, they opt out, they don't want to get stuff from us anymore, they die. Uh, you know, there's 19 different reasons why people get off your email list. A lot of them are legitimate, and some of them, they just, they just don't want to get stuff from you anymore. Um, some of it is they change their email address, and then they forget to, to get back on your list, and so when your email list reaches a certain size, you're going to have people uh, leaving your list, opting off your list, email addresses that are changing. Um, so you always, always want to be building it. So if you're in Starbucks, you want to be looking for how can I get people's email addresses. If you're at a networking meeting, a chamber of commerce event, a health fair, whatever it is, always be building your list. So we look for events where we can go and collect email addresses. So uh, Purdue University's in town. They have a retirees conference every year. Well, if we can expo booth at that and get email addresses, we're going to be there. Community College has a health fair for staff and students. We're going to be there getting email addresses. Even if even if college students aren't a great target for us, we want to get the staff and the administration and, and people that are just walking through the building. So uh, Purdue has a caregivers fair. Well, do we want caregivers? Maybe. Uh, but what we really want is the, the people in their 50s and 60s that are coming there looking for caregivers for their parents. We want their email addresses. So that's been one of our most successful ways to grow our email list. So look for opportunities 
that are literally sitting around you to build your email list. The, the money really is in the list. In fact, your accountant will tell you the size of your contact database is a factor in what your business is worth. Uh, if you don't have a database, if you don't have an email list, if you don't have a phone contact list, uh, a customer list, then it's a lot harder to sell your business uh, because you essentially don't have a book of business. And so um, just remember the list is king and the money is in the list. Always, always, always be building your list. Now, <clears throat> just to emphasize that the money's in the list, in uh, 2012, we were building our brand new building, um, and I had a $35,000 check due to the builder uh, at the end of September, and I didn't exactly have $35,000 just, just sitting around. In fact, I thought to myself, how am I going to come up with the, the final $35,000? to occupy this brand new building, which I was going to have the opportunity to buy, and I was able to buy uh, a short few months later, and that 35000 turned out to be my down payment later, so it was a great investment. It was a great financial opportunity, in fact, for me, but I didn't have thirty five grand sitting around. But I did have a big email list, and I had never run a gigantic sale before, and I sent two emails out. And it literally was a, a, a buy one, get one free small group personal training sale that I'd never done before. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend that everyone this is appropriate for that you go do this. But, um, but two emails, an email went out Saturday morning and Monday morning Labor Day. And I brought in $85,000 in checks, in cash, in credit cards, actual payments, not contract payments, mind you, but actual money in hand. Uh, in about four days. So from Labor Day, Monday, through about Thursday, $85,000 came in. In fact, $58,000 came in in about four hours on Labor Day. Uh, at one point, we had people, nine people deep, waiting to write us checks, swipe credit cards for between two and $3,000 a piece. I think we had seven or eight voicemails. And this was literally just from two emails, no other marketing. So the money is in the list. But again, you have to be building your list. And so if you're listening and you're like, well, gee, my list is only 40 people. Well, there's a certain amount of money in that list, but guess what? Um, get it to 80 people. Get it to 200 people. Um, start working harder to build your list. Uh, if you have no email list whatsoever right now, then start scrapping every bit of contact information you have together to get 100 to 200 people. Uh, I tell most people that I'm coaching these days, you're not trying very hard if you can't get 200 people to get your email list started. I mean, let's be honest. You've got Facebook friends. You've got current clients. You've got former clients. You've got people that have come in to see you. Uh, you've got phone numbers of people. I mean, y y odds are in your contact sphere you have 200 people. Somebody cuts your hair. Uh, you know, who's your hairstylist? Who's, who, who do you go to, to for pedicures or manicures, massage therapy? Who's your chiropractor? Get these people on your email list build your contact sphere, uh, get it going, and then keep building it from there. And then the advanced techniques are when we start getting into Facebook and squeeze pages and opt-ins and, and getting people to give you their email address on your website and those sorts of things. But if you don't have a list, get going on it right away. So let's talk about Facebook. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Facebook. Um, I've already done a specific webinar on Facebook marketing. Um, if you don't have that, shoot me an email. I'll get that to you. Um, simple things that you can start doing right away. You, you need to have a fan page. You need to have a personal page. I'm sorry. If you're not on Facebook and if you tell me I don't do Facebook, then fine. Get on there and start using it for business. You simply have to do it um, if you don't want to, if you don't want to do it as um, your person because you're afraid somebody from your background is going to find you, like I hear people say, well, I don't want my high school classmates to find me, then fine. Use a pseudonym, um, you know, use a, some sort of code name, but you need to have a personal account and you need to have a fan page. Um, and you need to be posting two to three times daily. People are finding your business via Facebook. They're researching it. They're looking for reviews. They're looking for what people say, what, what you're posting, what you're about. It, it, Facebook is really sort of the coffee shop living room feel of what your business feels like and so if you're if you're posting less than once a month people are going to think you're not home or you're out to lunch right so um, you have to be posting two times a month or people are literally not going to take you seriously 
but you really should be posting two to three times a day. Sometimes people go, wow, I don't have time to be on Facebook two to three times a day. You're not going to post two to three times every day. You're going to schedule two to three posts per day. So on Tuesday afternoon, you know, at two o'clock in the afternoon, you might spend an hour working on your Facebook marketing and you're going to schedule 14 posts for the next seven days. Okay, so you're going to schedule two posts a day for the next seven days. Now, if you have a little bit more time, you're going to schedule three posts a day for the next seven days. And you're going to you're going to post things like a funny video of you training a client. You're going to post things of you trying to do a handstand. You're going to post things of random crazy push-ups. You're going to post fitness tips, healthy recipes. Uh, you're going to post motivational um, speaker videos. You're going to post, I mean, all sorts of stuff that you can post. There's tons of content that you can be putting on your Facebook page. You're going to post client testimonials. Those are great to put on Facebook two to three times a week. Uh, occasionally, you're going to post offers. Hey, this weekend, I'm doing a, a charity boot camp. Uh, come in on Saturday and work out for donations, right? I mean, you can post stuff like that. Um, you know, next week we're closed for the 4th of July, but come in on the 2nd and 3rd for a free training session. I mean, you can post offers like that. Um, so it doesn't have to be complex. Uh, literally in an hour, you can come up with 14 posts. So you're posting two times every day. Uh, Facebook has a nice little scheduler button. So you can schedule it, you know, Monday at 8 a.m., Monday at 8 p.m., Tuesday at 9 a.m., Tuesday at 7 p.m. So if you can get to the habit of three times, I recommend one in the morning, one around lunchtime when people come back from their lunch break, they check Facebook, and then sometime in the evening after dinner. Um, so schedule them that way. Uh, and then every once in a while, check in there, right? If somebody comments, you know, make sure you reply to their comment. If somebody likes or shares, make sure you notice that kind of activity. Um, at some point, as you get more comfortable with Facebook, you need to learn to use ads and pixels so that you can be tracking and building a Facebook audience. Pixels really are a Facebook list building tool. And Scott Rockliffe, the, the webinar I put in the chat box there on the YouTube, um, Scott Rockliffe goes into a little bit more detail. But what you can do is run an ad and, and Facebook will allow you to pixel um, those ads and you build a little pixel. And so anybody who goes to uh, a particular squeeze page, if you use FitPro newsletter, they're they're ready for pixels. You plug in your Facebook pixel and you can start building a Facebook custom audience. And so it's not an email list, but it's sort of a Facebook custom audience list. And then you can advertise just to those people. So right now in my Facebook account, I have 30 people that clicked on a particular ad and went to a particular page that I sent them to. Um, so that tells me they have some interest in watching one of my fitness videos. So now I can I can advertise on Facebook just to those 30 people um, for as long as I want so I can get very targeted. So I encourage you, if you want to get more savvy with Facebook marketing, watch that webinar with Scott uh, Rockliffe. He spoke at our summit. He gives some great insights in terms of to how to use Facebook to, to really crank up your local marketing. So let's talk a little bit about video. Um, if you're not doing video, it's really, really not that expensive. Uh, you basically need about a hundred to hundred and fifty dollar flip cam. You can probably do it with an iPhone. Um, you just need something that can can produce quality sound. Sound really is the key. Most most flip cams, iPhones, small devices these days film in great HD quality. Uh, it's really just making sure you can get a microphone and get get the sound right. So you want to make sure the sound's decent. So you want to use videos for YouTube. You want to use videos for Facebook. And if you can use TV commercials in some TV aspect, you want to do that as well. Um, the reasons you want to use video, first of all, boomers and seniors are absolutely a TV generation. The boomers grew up on television. Um, it really helps build a know, like, and trust you factor. It helps establish credibility. Um, you become an authority. If people see you enough on camera, they, they think you're an authority, e even if you're not, right? Even if all you've done is film 20, you know, interview type YouTube videos and, you know, maybe they're in your office or maybe they're outside, maybe they're in your gym, maybe, you know, they're different places. You start to become an authority in people's minds because you're talking to them via video. And so, uh, it just has a power. And the, the reality is what happens is people become more comfortable with who you are. They know, like, and trust you more. And so they're more comfortable parting, parting with their money if they already like you. I mean, I have people come in 
they already know who I am because they've watched three, four, five, ten of my videos on, on YouTube, either through our Facebook or our YouTube channel or we've emailed them out. And so because of that, they feel like they already have a connection with me. They feel like they already know me. They feel like they already get it, what we're about. And so they're literally ready to come in and part with their money because they already know, like, and trust me. Now, TV, I put TV on there because we've used TV commercials for, oh, I want to say about six years, off and on. Sometimes we run heavy on TV. Sometimes we take breaks. Um, I think people burn out on seeing you on TV commercials. Um, we change them up. We run different commercials and obviously... Uh, are constantly changing the offers and, and different things of that nature. But um, TV in our market, because we're in a very small TV market, about 175,000 people, uh, I can run TV spots on CNBC, on the Golf Channel, um, Travel Channel, uh, Big Ten Network for a dollar a spot. One dollar for a TV commercial. So that tells you, obviously, we don't have a huge viewing audience. But also what it's about is that cable has really segmented out uh, the market. And so I can, I can target just my county, just the viewers in my county, which is about 170,000 people in my county. So I'm not paying for a, a huge TV audience of 300,000 people. And I can target TV channels that are not heavily watched. So sure, ESPN and Home and Garden and Food Network, they might cost 8 or $10 a spot. But CNBC, well, who's watching CNBC? It's mostly people over 50. Uh, who's watching Travel Channel, Golf Channel, Big Ten Network? Um, there's some other channels, A&E and a, a variety of others that are much heavier in the 50-plus demographic, and many of them are only a dollar a spot uh, because the cable networks have really segmented out uh, TV advertising. It's worth looking into. So I usually tell people, if you're in a metropolitan area, 500,000 or less, you should definitely look into TV marketing. To give you another example, Metronet just came to our market. It's high-end fiber optic. So it's internet speeds approximately 10 to 15 times faster than our cable internet. They also provide TV service. So affluent homes, highly educated homes, uh, individuals that want super high-speed internet in their homes that work from home uh, are are pursuing the the transition of that service and there are about 3,500 homes in our market that have Metronet so I can run on virtually any TV network I want ESPN um, you know USA CNBC CNN Fox News I mean you name the top cable networks I can run on those networks dollar a spot because it's only reaching 3,500 homes but do I want to reach those particular affluent 3,500 homes? Absolutely. So, so I encourage you to look into TV marketing, at least, at least sniff around, see if there's a, an affordable option. You might be surprised. BNI, Business Networking International. I, I really can't, um, I can't underestimate the power of, of what BNI has done for my business. Um, when I, I mentioned building that building in 2012, uh, I built that largely on the back of BNI. My architect was in BNI. Um, the building materials supplier uh, was in BNI. The um, actual steel construction framing company was in BNI. Uh, they actually won a national award for a unique fitness building with uh, architectural flair, and I'm kind of proud that they have a, a national prize. Uh, for our building, um, but BNI um, really made my building possible. In fact, uh, over five years, I built relationships, and basically, my architect came to me and said, "Look, for what you're paying for rent in in that strip mall, uh, we can build you a building, a brand new building. We'd be happy to rent it to you, and we'll give you an option to buy it." And I said, "What's the catch?" He said, "Well, the catch is your rent will probably be lower. You'll have brand new space." more square footage and you can lay it out and design it from scratch from brand new however you want and you'll be in a prime brand new location with three other brand new businesses uh, and I said again what's the catch and he said well there really is no catch unless you want to stay in your current overpriced strip mall uh, and so that to me has been a huge power of BNI you have 30 to 40 other business owners my BNI chapter happens to be 40 uh, some of them are as large as 50, uh, but they typically are in, in the 30s. 
and you've got other business owners that become your friends, your colleagues, uh, people that you rally around in your community. And I can't underestimate the, the social capital that, that really does become power and influence. I mean, I, I've got a car mechanic I can call. You know, if my friend has an issue with their car, I've got somebody they can call I know they can rely on. If, if their windshield gets broken, I've got a windshield guy. If their plumbing backs up, if their, their sump pump backs up, if their roof gets ripped off, I've got a, a restoration company. I've got, you know, a commercial agent for insurance who's taking care of my business. So when I'm on vacation like I was last year and my staff calls and says the building's flooding, which if you saw where my building is sitting up high on a hill, you'd wonder how on earth is my building flooding. And I know I can call my commercial agent and I can quickly call someone on my BNI chapter to, to deal with the water that's coming in. Um, our Functional Aging Institute Summit was purely made possible by social capital. Uh, the speakers we invited were due to years of Cody and I building power and influence in the fitness industry, making connections, giving to others, building relationships, and, and that's what enabled us to have really an incredible speaker lineup for a first-time event. Uh, I commented to some of our speakers and board members and some of the attendees, it felt like we were having the speaker lineup we should have had for our fifth anniversary, and 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 that really is a credit to social capital. And so if you're not networking, you absolutely have to network. Um, you've got to get out there and get to know more people. Uh, in fact, I, I don't consider myself an outgoing person. I'm not an extrovert. Uh, so it forces me to get out of my comfort zone and not hide in my office every week. We meet every week. So I have lunch with these people every single week. I've uh, developed friendships and relationships. Um, and, and I've just gotten to know a lot of people. So um, there are a lot of people in town that, that know me through other people. You know, oh, I've heard of Dan Ritchie because so-and-so knows him. Uh, there are 40 other business owners in town that are vouching for my reputation as a solid business owner, a guy you can trust, a guy you can send your mom to, a guy you can go your, yourself. If you've got a fitness need, you need to go see Dan Ritchie. And, and that's power and influence. And so you need to have that sort of network working for you. If there's not a BNI chapter in your area, I encourage you to find out what there is. There, there have to be some sort of business networking groups um, something you can join. Write a book. I believe every one of you probably has a book in you. Um, the, the reality is we all have a story to share. We all have some content to share. We all have something that we can contribute and share to others. Um, so it's time you do it. It really isn't as hard as you think. Uh, it does immediately give you some status. Uh, it's a lot more significant to give out a book than a business card or a postcard or a flyer. You hand somebody a book, that's a tangible thing that they're probably not going to just throw away. Uh, it's going to have a shelf life, right? It's going to wind up on their coffee table. It, and at the very least, they're going to spend 20 minutes looking at it. Maybe they're going to even take it into the bathroom for 15 minutes, right? I mean, at some point, they're going to at least flip through it. Um, so it's also going to give you more authority and credibility with boomers. Uh, there's there's no doubt they're going to realize, hey, you you take your craft seriously. You're you're passionate enough about it to have written a book. Um, so it it really isn't as hard as you think. Um, <clears throat> again, you're trying to find them and engage with them, and a book really does all of these very well. A book will help you find them because you can put the book in a variety of places, but the beautiful thing about the book is your clients will give it away, your clients will buy it as gifts. Uh, it's a great referral strategy, so we ask our clients, who would you like us to mail a copy of the book to? Uh, can you take the book to your doctor's office? I mean, there's just so many ways your book can now find them, and your book, of course, is going to engage with them because it's going to give them who you are, your heart, your passion, your vision, what you're about. It's going to absolutely get them to know, like, and trust you. Um, and it really should sell them, literally, to come in, seek out your services. So um, it's it really hits all of these very, very well. Here's uh, a look at our book, Never Grow Old. Uh, we hit the bestseller list on Amazon. Uh, our book consultant was really helpful. Nicole Gephardt helped us with that. Uh, we got to number one in a couple of categories. Uh, our goal is to get to number one in 
personal aging, which is under the health, fitness, and dieting category, and to knock off the goddess who had just been on Oprah's Sunday morning show, and we were able to knock her off, as well as bump off Suzanne Summers, Jane Fonda, Lorraine Bracco, and a number of uh, celebrities, and moved all the way to number one in uh, not only holistic in alternative medicine, but personal aging and health, fitness, and dieting. And amazingly, we moved to number one in the entire health, fitness, and dieting category. Uh, we did that in six countries. So technically, Cody and I are international bestsellers, and nobody can take that away from us ever. Um, interesting little tidbit for you. Um, Amazon's a little bit different than the New York Times. Amazon's category for bestseller is a 24-hour period. So if you're number one for 24 hours, you are a Amazon bestseller, which is a, a kind of a neat little claim to fame. So, But that's not necessarily your goal. Um, obviously, you'd want to get your book uh, onto Amazon, uh, and Amazon makes it really very easy for you to order your book. So uh, we actually have put together a done-for-you uh, FAI functional fitness expert book because uh, we know some of you are saying, well, I don't have time to write a book. Uh, sounds like a nice marketing. Uh, but Nicole Gephardt and I have gotten together, and we've put together really a done-for-you, ready-to-go book. Uh, so if you want a book that you can start using, handing out at seminars, lectures, fairs, coffee shops, doctor's offices, uh, we've, we've got it. It's ready to go. Um, it's really a functional fitness expert book. Uh, you create the title, the subtitle, obviously your author name goes on it. You you suggest the cover photo and the business branding. Uh, we can help you with all of that, but that, that really is your design, your look, your customization. You write the introduction chapter. Um, Dr. Cody Sype writes the foreword, um, and then we've got a bunch of done-for-you content ready to go that is going to drive clients in. Um, so it's written from a perspective of what does a brand-new client um, expect when they start to work with a functional aging specialist. Now, we've put a uh, minor caveat to this since it is a Functional Aging Institute done for you book, um, and it is written from the perspective of you're a functional aging specialist, um, you know, a, a highly credentialed trainer in your market, the local go to expert. You do need to be a functional aging specialist to qualify um, to use our done for you book. Um, you can plug in your client testimonials, obviously your bio and photo go in there, and then your special offer sales copy. Um, so the book can be as short as 75 pages and as long as 100, depending on how much content you want to add. Uh, it really is a positioning piece to position you as the expert in your market. And so uh, if that's something you're interested in, visit bookitauthors.com slash FAI. That's bookitauthors.com slash FAI. Um, <clears throat> you do get regional author exclusivity, um, so there's not going to be 10 different versions of this book bouncing around your market. Okay, if, if you're in Minneapolis and you decide you want this book, it's kind of a first come, first serve. So it'll cost you about $2.50 a book. Um, there's no minimum orders, so you can order 50, you can order 100, you can order 200. Really, the goal is to get out as many books as you can. We've gotten out almost 300 now in our market, and my goal is to get that up to 1,000 as fast as possible. Uh, I, I seriously want people bumping into each other saying, have you seen the Never Grow Old book? Uh, have you seen the book that, that Dr. Dan Ritchie put out? It, it's really helping me. And so uh, you can turn this around in as fast as 21 days. So if it's something you think you want to do, it's going to help you. If you've got an event coming up where you're going to have 100 people at, uh, we can turn this around pretty quick. Uh, the cost is just under $1,900, and everything uh, is done for you. All you have to do is work with Nicole to, to customize your title and get some of your client pictures, your bio, and those things. And you, you, you really can get that done in just a couple of hours and, and turn this thing around. So. Um, great, great resource that we've developed that we think can really, really help you. If you have another book you want to write, um, you know, completely um, of your own, um, here's, again, Nicole Gephardt's information, bookitauthors.com slash FAI. Um, <clears throat> we gave out this book at the summit, Book It, Turn Your Book into Paying Customers. She has helped accountants, attorneys, uh, people in the industry, um, of uh, safety, so people in work comp, 
um, all, all sorts of industries. She has helped people use a book to position themselves as the local expert. Um, and it just starts to put you a notch above uh, the rest of the folks. And so she's got a couple different categories. If, if you want to go for that Amazon best-selling author, if, you know, getting on the speaking tour is important to you and, and really positioning yourself as a leading authority, the best-selling author was, was a status that Cody and I wanted because we are speaking around the world and we are trying to position the Functional Aging Institute as um, the go-to place. And so having international best-selling authors uh, behind our name just, just helps boost our credibility. So, all right. <clears throat> Before we wrap up here, um, go ahead and start posting your, your questions, your comments, your thoughts. I'll get to those here in just a, uh, just a moment. Um, boomers are online and you should be too. So if you're a boomer and you're saying, well, I've just never embraced Facebook, uh, it's time you do because boomers are on Facebook in big numbers, big, big numbers, and you need to have a presence there. So uh, you don't necessarily have to have a blog. Uh, an email list can serve that way. If you have a blog, that's great. You can use blog content in your email posts. You can use blog content um, <clears throat> in your Facebook posts. And it's just another uh, avenue. But if you don't have a blog, you don't need to go create one. You can use your email list to send out essentially blog type content. Um, you need to be on Facebook. You need to start making some videos on YouTube. Now, I'm going to throw out a little <laughs> caveat there. If you're horrible on camera, um, you either need to get better on camera or you need to have a staff member start doing some of your videos. So <laughs> if, if it's turn on the camera and all of a sudden... Joe becomes deer in the headlights, um, you know, monster talk, uh, robot man, then that's not going to help portray your business. So you may want to get a staff member that's a little more uh, personable, engaging, outgoing. Uh, but typically, you start filming two, three, four videos, and you just start getting comfortable, right? Like, I'm talking to you guys having a good time, and you're not talking back, and um, it's the same thing on camera. You just start to realize I'm not talking to the camera. I'm talking to 40 people, you know, just on the other side of the camera that all are excited to hear me talk. And so you, you just get comfortable with it and your natural personality comes out. Um, Pinterest is a new avenue. Um, definitely encourage you to, to look into that. Obviously, Twitter is another option. LinkedIn, I really think, is more business to business. Uh, again, it can be valuable to be doing business networking. Uh, those sorts of things, you know, hey, I, I, I need to hire a trainer. Anybody know any leads? Um, you know, those kinds of things. I haven't seen LinkedIn be useful for um, for marketing to boomers, but it is useful for connecting with other business owners and, and other people in the, the business community. So, um, so you've got to have a presence online. Okay, so <clears throat> just to kind of wrap up uh, what sells. Uh, and we're not looking for sex cells. That might have been your first thought. Uh, we're actually looking for self-actualization. So your marketing messages via email, Facebook, YouTube videos that you do, um, you know, when you're networking, you want to be talking about self-actualization type experiences. So we're looking for these um, peak life experiences, uh, and you want those to come through your marketing messages, whether it's for a product, a service, uh, simply the message itself. And so we're not selling fitness vanity. We're not selling, you know, uh, everlasting youth or the fountain of youth or anti-aging. We're selling result-oriented things, peak experiences, right? Like the opportunity to enjoy another trip to Europe, the opportunity to continue to hit the golf ball well, the opportunity to play with your grandchildren and not be tired, the opportunity to do whatever it is that you want to do. And so um, so you want to think about self-actualization. And when we think about sort of the, the hierarchy of development and needs, right, when we start out, it's immediate physiological needs. And then as we grow up, it's safety. And as we reach a certain age, it's love and affection and belonging. And, and then it's esteem and respect and kind of who we are in the world. And then we, we reach this point of self-actualization and so your marketing messages need need to resonate that sort of concept. And um, people aren't, in their 50s and 60s, people aren't going to respond necessarily to, you know, six-pack abs and skinny jeans and, and 
and this concept of, you know, if you're 50 pounds overweight, you can become a completely different person. They're not looking necessarily to become a completely different person. In fact, they're probably comfortable with who they are uh, at this point. They may want to make some slight improvements uh, so they can have these peak experiences, right? So, so think about that as that weaves throughout all of your messaging. You also want to try to, to create opportunities to, to be uh, what we call generative. And so you want to be giving back to the community and do that in public ways. Um, not in obnoxious public ways, but just make it known that you are part of the community and you want to give back. So, you know, here's a picture of a couple of our trainers doing a, participating in a food drive. Um, and we had a lot of fun with that. We, we did uh, some goofy, crazy stunts and people brought in all kinds of food. Um, and we did a uh, an Apple board for teachers. So we did Miracles for Murdoch. Murdoch is one of the lowest income schools in our uh, community. Um, and it's, it's kind of ironic. Five minutes from one of our studios is a very well-funded school, very affluent parents. Teachers are well-supported. Ten minutes across the river we have Murdoch and very little parent involvement, very little support. Um, and the teachers really, really just rely on the school to give them support. So we said, hey, we're going to put up a dream board for you. Give us a uh, 100 apples with post-it notes of the stuff you really would love to have for your classroom. And they first came back with a pitiful list, right? Like pencils and staples and, you know, sad, pitiful stuff that the reality is the school should be supplying them anyway, right? And I said to the principal, is this, do they really need pencils and staples? And she said, no. She said, I supply all that stuff. You know, the state gives us plenty of school supplies for them. She says, I said, tell them to dig a little deeper, dream a little bigger. And so, they put down things like carpet squares and bean bags and Uno games and board games and just all kinds of fun stuff, cool stuff, right, that teachers would love to have. And that apple board, by the end, uh, over two-thirds of those apples were gone, and we took about 10 or 12 classrooms worth of supplies over to them, and the teachers were blown away. And, and guess what? Our members just thanked us, right? All they did was say, that was really cool that we did that for, for Murdoch, right? We, we wouldn't have known that they needed our help. And everybody was happy to chip in, right? And so I just kind of asked my clients to step up, and, and we all did our part. And there's me in the pink hard hat. Um, <laughs> I was seen all over town for about six months in that pink hard hat. Uh, even went to a ultimate pink party with 400 crazy pink-dressed ladies for a breast cancer awareness thing. And they said, we got to get Dr. Dan out here in the pink hard hat. I said, all right, fine. So... Habitat for Humanity builds a house every year with women only. Men are not allowed to help. Men are not allowed to build. They're not allowed to do the electricity. Nothing, right? Women contractors do it all, every piece of it. And then they, they go ask um, a bunch of men to raise all the money to, to build this house. And so um, if you raise $250 or more, you get to keep the pink hard hat as a souvenir. And uh, Miracles Fitness gave $2,700 to, to Habitat with all my pink hard hat uh, <laughs> demonstrating I did. So so do those sorts of things. Uh, I told this story um, this, this afternoon. Uh, our builder, um, who was, I believe, just starting to build our new Miracles Fitness, um, does a charity bike ride. And he came to me and he said, Dan, I, I need a little help fundraising. What do you suggest? And I said, well, tell me what you're doing. And he said, I'm, I'm doing this charity bike ride out at Subaru. Uh, all the Subaru Outbacks are built in Lafayette, and they have a test track. And every year, they have a charity bike ride on the the test track. And I said, well, well, what's it for? And who, you know, what? Just give me the details, right? Well, he's he's doing a charity bike ride. It's a 24-hour marathon bike ride. You basically can rest whenever you want, but you're trying to bike as many miles as you can and raise as many dollars as you can for CASA, which is court appointed special advocates for kids. So it's kids that wind up in the court system. Uh, due to parental abuse or, or drug situations or foster care or whatever it is, and then they have a court-appointed advocate, and uh, they, this is their main fundraiser to to help fund these these court-appointed advocates. I said, well, that that sounds like something obviously our community needs, and and certainly our clients would care about you know children that that are in that sort of situation, and and tell me how I can help. He said, well, I've got a a registration donation page where people can go to donate. I said, all right, well, well, send me the information, just the story you just told me. All I did was email it out one time. 
emailed it out to my list about two days before his event. And I think my list gave somewhere between $1,000 and $1,200 to, to his charity. In fact, he, he texted me at one point and said, Dan, what did you do? And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, all of a sudden, I've added $800 to my, my donations. I have no idea who these people are and where all this money's coming from. I said, well, you asked me to send an email out, so I did. And uh, he said, who's so-and-so? And I said, oh, that's one of our clients. He's like, he gave me $200. Who's so-and-so? $100. And just it just kind of blew him away how generous really total strangers were to him, right? And the reality is all I did was tell them about our builder and what he was doing. Um, I didn't even ask that they donate. I just said, this is what he's doing. This is what costs is about. This is the charity bike ride he's doing. If you have any interest in donating, here's the link. And, and the interesting thing, here's the amazing thing to me, is that people in this age range, um, you know, I think get a bad rap when we say they're stingy or they're cheap or they're tight or whatever it is. Because you know what? I had several people thank me for sharing the opportunity so they could give him money. I mean, literally, they were excited to find out about it and excited to be able to give him money. And so it just opened my eyes to the fact that there are generous people out there that just need to hear about opportunities to, to give back in the community. And so um, so that was really a powerful use of my email list and a, a cool thing to do. So we had both mayors come out for a celebrity workout. Um, this is Mayor Dennis on the right uh, in the gray and uh, Mayor Rozworski on the left. Uh, these are great guys, uh, Mayor Lafayette on the left, Mayor West Lafayette on the right, and uh, they actually were on the police force together for about 20 years, and we use this mayor versus mayor ad online. Uh, we use this on the local uh, news website, WLFI.com, where people go for their news, and we had this mayor versus mayor, we put our Miracles Fitness logo, and people would click on that and watch the video of these two guys working out in our facility. Um, and this publicity stunt, which is really what it was, it was a publicity stunt, um, generated a $10,000 grant to our local food bank. Uh, Pound for Pound Challenge was a national campaign that went on several years ago. Biggest Loser TV show partnered with it. Uh, Feeding America and General Mills uh, were basically sponsors, and they were donating $10,000 to local food banks. So we asked the mayors to come out and make a public proclamation. We had a, a, a big open house event they both came and made proclamations that you know we need to do this to to help raise funds for food banks and um and then we asked them to do a cameo workout and so they came in and for 30 minutes we filmed them training together and it was a blast it was a riot they had fun we had fun and we still share that video it's on our miracles fitness youtube channel i encourage you to check it out because it's a blast um we still four years later have people ask which mayor won you know, and, and of course, it was just a celebrity stunt, a publicity stunt, and the mayors were great sports at that. You can become the local expert if you can get on local television. Um, local television's looking for content, especially at 5 a.m. Uh, it's not always fun to be on the news at 5 a.m., but it's totally worth it. And boomers and seniors are watching the news at 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Uh, this is Laura Kirtley. Uh, I probably spent about two years on the local news with her. And when she moved on to a bigger market, who do you think was the first person I contacted when my book came out? I said, hey, Laura, my book has come out. I'd love to come do an interview on your news station. She's in a bigger market than our market here. And she had me on for a nine-minute segment, which you can check out on uh, functionalfitnesssolution.com if you ever want to check that interview out. But, but seek that out. You know, Contact your local news station and see if they want some fitness content, some workout tips. Uh, we used to do two and three minute workout demos live on the news at like 5.30 in the morning, 6.15 in the morning. They have two hours to fill in most um, most networks. They start at 5 a.m. and they go till 7 a.m. When, when the major news networks come on with the Today Show and Good Morning America. So they've got two hours to fill. Um, they're looking for content. They're looking for segments. So propose a wellness Wednesday segment. That's what we did. We did Wellness Wednesdays. Uh, every other Wednesday, I was coming in and getting on the news. Do you think that increased my credibility, my authority in my market? Absolutely, it did. It was a, a really, really powerful tool. Um, and then we used uh, a couple of the TV anchors, Laura Kirtley, when she, as soon as she left the TV station, we grabbed her and put her in a TV commercial. Uh, once her um, 
uh, ability to endorse products and she didn't have the conflict of interest to being a news person, we grabbed her, put her in TV commercials, and we still use her in YouTube videos on Facebook and stuff like that. Because guess what? People 50 to 70, they know her, they like her, they trust her, they were trusting her for their news for several years. They know who she is. She's a huge testimonial for us. And she also happened to train at our facility for a couple of years, so that helped. So as we wrap up, <clears throat> just highlight a couple of our programs. If you are not a functional aging specialist, remember the, the Done For You book. If you're interested in that, uh, you need to become a functional aging specialist. You can find out about that on our website. Uh, you do get CECs from all the major entities. It's uh, 13 educational modules, five hours of video, about uh, 12 manuals. On average, each manual is about 10 to 15 pages, so about 100, 140, 150 pages of reading. Um, you have six months to pass the test uh, to become credentialed. Uh, it's a 90-question test all online. <clears throat> the entire program can be done online. Uh, we do offer workshops for, for people that want an in-person uh, workshop, so there's there's that option as well. Our goal is to impact a million lives, um, and we know 10,000 trainers in the FAI program um, have the ability to easily impact a million lives on a, a weekly basis, um, but over the, their entire career, they actually will be impacting closer to 10 million lives. And so that's 10 million people that are going to age dramatically differently, um, dramatically more aggressively with a different trajectory and outlook on life. And that's kind of our big vision and what we're excited about. If you do this right, if you market to the mature market correctly and you do it in an attractive way, um, you're going to also attract others. You're going to get what we call the spillover effect. I love this visual. So if you fill the top two glasses here really, really well, guess what? You're going to get women in their 40s um, because they're going to find your message attractive. Um, you're going to get older seniors. So you're going to get people over 70 coming into you saying, hey, I, I resonate with what you're doing. And, you know, I'm 72 and, and I don't want to get, you know, any older than I am. Right? You're going to get people even in their 80s. And you're certainly going to get people with clinical and medical conditions because they're going to seek you out because you're not like the other health clubs. You're not like the other personal trainers or boot camps because you have a more specialized approach. And so you're going to wind up getting these other clients um, just as a spillover. Here are some resources uh, for you to check out. Um, this actually is a snapshot of Cody's bookshelf. Um, the ones right in the middle here, No BS Marketing to Boomers and Seniors by Dan Kennedy and No BS Marketing to the Affluent, also by Dan Kennedy. Highly recommend those as starting points uh, to give you really some basic marketing tools and, and marketing concepts. Um, really, really powerful uh, books, but obviously there are a whole bunch here. So I'm going to leave that up for just a minute. <clears throat> All right, I'm about finished. I'm going to show you two more opportunities that are coming up. So now's the time for you to post your questions. <clears throat> so go ahead and post questions, comments, any thoughts. Well, I grabbed something else I want to show you real quick. We've got two opportunities coming up here in July. All right. The um, Functional Aging Business Building Workshop uh, is coming up at the end of July. Uh, this used to be called the Advanced Functional Aging Specialist, and we basically decided um, that's probably not the best name for it because what it really is is a business building workshop. It's for people that want to build their business, maybe start their business, own their own business someday, uh, design a business, and so we've renamed it the Functional Aging Business Building Workshop. So you don't have to be a Functional Aging Specialist. In fact, You'll, you'll get that as a bonus, um, and you get some follow-up. And so you get to spend two days here at our, our facility and really see the ins and outs of our entire facility. So um, it sort of comes with the, the, the best of franchising, um, but the best of not franchising, we like to say. So we're not going to franchise, but you can come steal our business model in two days. You can model what you like borrow what you like, uh, rip off what you like, and then leave what you don't like, right? So uh, our facility might be bigger than you want, so no problem. You know, make yours a little bit smaller. So we spend kind of the, the first half of the first day um, breaking down our business, touring both our facilities, 
Um, you can learn more here at, at this page, functionalagentinstitute.com slash business workshop. Uh, we spend half a day um, touring both facilities and then half a day really talking about the whole business opportunity, what it looks like to start a business from scratch, some of the gigantic mistakes we made and how you can save twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars by not making those. Um, <laughs> that excites us because boy, we wish we'd had somebody tell us. Um, but we didn't, so you know we've learned from our mistakes and are happy to teach you those. Day two really is a coaching day. Um, it's a focused day where we spend a lot of time teaching. Uh, we're going to spend some time teaching marketing, uh, client attraction, sales, uh, and then we're going to coach business by business. So it's a, a really a hot seat opportunity for us to spend an hour breaking down your business and, and really giving you a 90-day plan so you leave with exactly what you need to do to either open a business, you know, rebrand your business, redesign your business, or just get your business cranking. And so um, we're doing that July 31st and August 1st uh, here at West Lafayette and Lafayette, Indiana. Um, then the other opportunity we've got is just a one-day coaching, and this actually is in Los Angeles. Uh, Cody will be doing this uh, on July 18th in Los Angeles. We just did this in Phoenix the day after our summit. Uh, we had a blast with nine business owners, uh, and this really is um, essentially like day two of the, the business building workshop. Um, so you don't need to come see our facility for it. We spend the morning teaching. Uh, we really pinpoint ideal clients. Who's your ideal client? Who should you be going after? Uh, and then we focus in on your business. And we identify what are the two to three big ideas that are going to move your business forward in the next 60 days. And so we really we really narrow in. You know, If you're just starting out and you want to go from zero to 30, to 50 clients fast, then we're going to focus on what you need for that. If you're established and you've got 100 clients and you're like, I'm just not getting over the hump, I want to get to 150 clients, then we're going to give you your marching orders. And and so those are our two opportunities we've got coming up. Uh, you can check those out again at our website um, or email me at uh, the contact at functionalaginginstitute.com. So I'll put that email in the box. So um, I'll hang around for a few questions. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, uh, as late as it is, and uh, if you're on the West Coast, you're probably just finishing dinner. Um, but either way, thanks so much for joining us tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll see a few questions come in here. If not, uh, we'll get out of here pretty quickly. So. Anybody have any questions, comments, anything? Let's see. Um, <clears throat> ah, Susie, good question. <laughs> if I already hate checking emails and being online, uh, essentially sitting at a desk, how much time does it really take to Facebook every day? Uh, honestly, Susie, if you hate um, online activity, then I would tell you to commit 45 minutes a week to Facebook. And you're not going to be on Facebook every day. I'm not on Facebook every day. Um, but my business should be posting on Facebook every day. Uh, at least our goal is to post two to three times a day. And so uh, typically I don't do it. One of my trainers, and you can hire somebody to do this for about 10 bucks an hour if you give them good guidance and teach them what to do. In about 45 minutes, one of my trainers can schedule about 10 to 15 posts. And as you get better at it, you get faster. Um, and as you have more videos on YouTube, you have more content to pull from. And so you take 45 minutes, Susie, and you schedule as many posts as you can for the next five to 10 days. So you're scheduling two posts a day. So you're not on Facebook every day, but your business is posting on Facebook every day. So it looks like you're on Facebook every day. It looks like you're you're lively and present, um, but you don't have to actually be on it every day. In fact, I would find that very distracting if every day you had to go to Facebook for 10 minutes. Uh, that's going to be too distracting. So find a time when you've got some downtime, some slow time, you know, 40 minutes here or there throughout the week where you can sit down and have a strategic focused, okay, I'm going to post this fitness tip. I'm going to post this exercise movement. I'm going to post this workout. I'm going to post this recipe. I'm going to post this video. I'm going to post this motivational quote. 
boom, 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 boom. So you get into a rhythm and you post several posts. So, so great question, Susie. Um, and again, once you get good at that and you lay out the formula for that, you can have an administrative assistant do that. Um, you could probably hire a college student, an intern, uh, a high school kid to do it for you. You just have to make sure you give them clear guidelines um, and, and you lay out a bunch of content. So it, it, this is where if you have a blog with a lot of articles, it's great because you can just pull content from it and say, hey, I put up this blog post on you know, how to lose weight, eating uh, gluten-free or, you know, I mean, whatever the topics are, right? So, um, so great question. Any other questions before we close out the night? All right. Um, well, I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, Really glad we got to do this tonight. Um, again, I encourage you to follow us on Facebook if you're not, because we do post upcoming webinars there. And we do try to post all our webinar recordings there. Almost, um, I shouldn't say that, but several of our webinar recordings are on our YouTube channel, functionalagentinstitute.com. The Scott Rockcliffe one, unfortunately, was not. That got put on to my Facebook channel. So if you YouTube, if you go on YouTube and you search Dan Ritchie and Scott Rockcliffe Facebook, you will find it. I did put the link here in the chat box for you. Um, but otherwise, have a great night and we'll see you on the next webinar in the near future. Thanks.